Hi, I'm Max and I make mods. I'm the person who makes Half-Life VR. If you don't know what Half-Life VR is, um, just a quick summary. It's a virtual reality mod for the original Half-Life from 1998. If you want to know more about that project, um, there are links in the description so you can check those out. In this video, I want to talk about something that gets brought up a lot and that I get asked a lot, and that is virtual reality support for Blue Shift and Opposing Force. This video will consist basically of three parts. In the first part, I want to talk about how Half-Life works, especially in terms of modding and also comparing how Half-Life mods work to how mods work in modern games. In the second part, I want to talk about what's so difficult about adding support for Blue Shift and Opposing Force with the virtual reality mod that I have right now for Half-Life. In the third part, I want to talk about... In the third part, I want to address something that also people repeatedly bring to my attention, which is, hey, people manage to get Blue Shift and Opposing Force work in virtual reality, and then they point to something that people did back in 2017 and 2018 with my mod, or rather with the very first prototyping experiment I did back then. And I want to explain why they were able to do that and what they actually did and why it's not what you think it is. So for the first part, how does Half-Life actually work in terms of modding? Uh, for that, we have to understand that Half-Life consists basically of three pieces. One is the engine, you know, the thing that we call gold source. That is closed source, it's the executable, it's all of the library files that you find in your Half-Life folder. The engine part is closed source, which means you don't have access to the source code, it's very difficult to modify or to work with. It's basically a little black box that does certain things in a certain way. The other two parts, those are really relevant when it comes to modding. And they're generally called the client part and the server or the game part. And if you're familiar with Half-Life mods, you probably have heard of the files that contains those parts, which is the client.dll and the hl.dll. The client DLL contains everything that has to do with input and output. So it takes care of keyboard and mouse and joystick stuff. Uh, it takes care of the HUD display. Um, it's responsible for sprite and 3D model rendering. You know, it does those kind of things. The server or game part contains all of the logic of the game Half-Life. So that's where all the NPCs, the scientists, the Barneys, the monsters, the enemies, etc. are in. Um, this is where movement code is defined. You know, how does the player move in the world? This is where all of the scripting happens in, in the levels, etc. Both the client and the game part heavily interact with the engine. So for example, the engine actually contains all the stuff that is responsible for collision. The engine also um, has the renderer. So while the client says, oh, I want to render this sprite, or I want to render this 3D model, it's the engine that does that. And when the server says, oh, I want these things to collide, or I want this object to move in a certain direction, it's the engine who does that. And now when we talk about Half-Life mods, the way they work is they replace the client and the game part. Valve, back in 1998, when they made Half-Life, decided to open source these two. So unlike the engine, which is closed source and a black box, those two parts are actually open source. You can go to GitHub right now and see the source code for those two parts for Half-Life. And when we talk about Half-Life mods, what we actually mean is someone takes that source code, changes things in the source code, and then builds a new client and a new game library for the game. And then tells Half-Life, you know, instead of loading your game and client libraries, load mine. And that's the main difference towards modern mods in modern games, which works fundamentally differently, where you don't replace game code, but instead you add more code onto it, kind of like a plugin. So in a modern game, what happens is a mod is loaded and then the mod just runs within the context of the game and is able to modify things while it's running. So it's able to call functions in the game code and it's able to change variab variables here and there. But in Half-Life, you replace the game code. I think a good analogy is, imagine you have a bicycle. The bicycle is Half-Life. And now you have a mod and that mod is put reflective thingies on the wheels of the bicycle. And you have a different mod and that is replace the wheels with, I don't know, bigger wheels. 
if you are now a person who wants to have a bicycle that has the bigger wheels and the reflective thingies, you can't just take those two bicycles and mash them together. What you need to do is do the changes that those two mods do to the bicycle that you now build. And then you have a fourth bicycle with bigger wheels and reflective thingies. Whereas in modern games, what you have is you have the bicycle, that's the game. And then you have a mod, which is put reflective thingies on wheels. And then you have a mod, which is replace wheels with bigger wheels. And those mods can work together, which ends up with the game, the bicycle, just having bigger wheels and reflective vests. But that is not how Half-Life works. I said reflective vests, who cares? <laughs> which brings us to the second part of the video getting blue shift and opposing force into VR. So as you now understand, we have blue shift and opposing force, which modify game code, which means they have their own game libraries that are distinct and independent and different from the original Half-Life game code. They are minimally different. You know, they added just a few things here and there. I mean, opposing force added more stuff with like more or new monsters, new weapons and that kind of stuff. And like, climbable ropes and the grappling gun. But all in all, they took the original Half-Life game source code and then they modified that and then they built the new game library that is being used by the game running Opposing Force or Blue Shift. And my mod, the Virtual Reality mod, does the same thing. It took the original Half-Life source code and I modified and worked on it for the last five years to get Virtual Reality into Half-Life. So now you have my game code or my game library that is Half-Life with VR, and then you have the Opposing Force game library, which is Half-Life with stuff that makes it Opposing Force. You cannot mesh those two together. Instead, what you need to do is you need to take the source code of Half-Life or the source code of Opposing Force or the source code of my mod, and then you need to put the changes in to get the mix. So that would mean take the source code of my mod and then make all the changes in my source code that were made 20 years ago to the original Half-Life source code to get Opposing Force. In other words, you have to reprogram Opposing Force from scratch. And that, of course, is a lot of work. And even with things like, you know, community projects that have reprogrammed Opposing Force and Blueshift, which exists, I'm aware of those, it's not that trivial. You can't just, you know, copy paste the code over because there are a lot of files in the source code that were modified for the VR mod and that have been modified for Opposing Force or Blue Shift, meaning you still have to manually look, okay, where are the changes? Which lines of codes have to like move here and there? So yeah, it's, it's not trivial work. It's possible, but it's just, it's not as easy as it would be with a modern game where you can just, you know, have like multiple plugins running at the same time. And that brings me to the third part of the video. And that is why were people able back in 2017, back in 2018, with my very early prototype, like the very first version of this VR mod for Half-Life to run Opposing Force. There are YouTube videos, there are even instructions how to do it. And that again has to do with there being a game part and a client part. And here's the thing. If you have a mod that modifies the client part, but not the game part, and you have a second mod that modifies the game part, but not the client part, you can theoretically just take the game part from that mod and the client part from that mod and use them simultaneously. Basically just to Half-Life replace the client part with that client part and replace the game part with that game part. And in essence, that is what happened. The vast majority of code changes for Opposing Force and Blue Shift happened in the game code. They did very little, if anything, in terms of rendering or how input works. You know, it was still, you, you still had the same keyboard mouse input, you still, at the same HUD, yeah, like it looks different, the HUD, like there are different sprites being used, but the, the logic, like the coded logic, how it works is pretty much the same. And my mod back then, which at that point in time, I didn't even call an actual mod because it really was just a prototype. It really was just like 
a proof of concept, an experiment, a technical experiment, basically only changed the client part. It didn't do anything in the game part. All it did was make it possible to put a VR headset on and look around in Black Mesa. All of that happened in the client part. It was basically just a bunch of hacks that used the client code to modify the engine to render for VR headset. The client code also had all the code to communicate with SteamVR and it also had a modification that made all the, the weapons, the crowbar, etc., that are usually like somewhere in front of your face be where your controller is. But the game code, that is where all the important stuff happens, like pulling levers, pressing buttons, and the actual physics of using weapons. Because, and that's probably something that people either didn't notice or didn't really care about when they did those experiments five years ago. While it looks like the weapon is in your hand, when you actually use it, it's the game code deciding where you shoot from and what you shoot at. It's the client side that decides what it looks like. So the client side that was my code made it look like the weapon is like somewhere here in your hand and it's shooting in that direction and even made the decals appear on the wall where you would expect it. But it is the game side that actually decides what is hit. It's sometimes people get a bit confused by that, but you have like one part and half left that decides what you see when you shoot and you have one side that decides what happens when you shoot. And the side that decides what happens, that would then be the opposing force code, which still uses your face position and what you look at. So you can have your gun aim wherever and you will see the bullets go that direction, but you will actually shoot wherever you're looking at. And there are, there are a whole lot of other issues with having the original game code run while it just visually appears on the client side as if you were in like a VR environment. I mean, there's a reason why it took me five years to get to this point with this mod. And the same changes that I did to Half-Life would need to be done to opposing force. You know, the grappling gun needs to work in VR. The ropes need to work in VR. All the new weapons need to properly work in VR. Again, not trivial work. Possible, but difficult. And definitely not as easy as just taking, well, there's a pausing force, well, there's your mod, just like mush them together. Not possible. It's just something that, that, I, that I wanted to clarify in a bit and I'll also just talk about and, and maybe summarize a bit in a video. Maybe it was interesting just also just to understand how Half-Life mods on like a very high level work. And with all that said, I guess thank you for watching um if you want please subscribe consider supporting me on patreon if you love what i do and i guess have a lovely day and bye